talking about shoplifting and how, in the words of one big retailer, it has become an epidemic. Now, you might have noticed more security guards in stores recently, and some products, sometimes like expensive meat or cheese, even has a security tag on it. Perhaps you've even seen somebody shoplifting yourself. Yeah, I think this is something we're all mm. really aware of. And now it's been revealed that a group of the UK's biggest retailers are going to pay money to police to help crack down on it. It's called Project Pegasus. And ten stores, including John Lewis, Tesco and Co-op, are going to pay £600,000, reportedly, to help with things like facial recognition and data sharing. Well, joining us now is Kate Hardcastle, the retail expert. Kate, thank okay. you for coming into the studio to talk through this with us tonight. Now, I know the details about Project Pegasus are still coming out, really, aren't they? But let's talk about the problem. Why is it on the rise? Why is it such a big issue right now? And it's an emotive issue because a lot mm. of it obviously comes down to the huge rising cost of living, people just being able to try and find a way to get through. And obviously that does mean that people that would never even consider that action before may have taken steps towards, unfortunately, having to look towards taking the goods rather than paying for the goods. But I think there's also a lot more behind it and behind this story and the way that we've changed shopping habits. For instance, self-checkouts. They are always areas where we've seen higher levels Levels of shrinkage shoplifting mm. and that's because I think it is an area where you're not vigilant uh, you're not being watched as much maybe some of it is intentional but we also see what we call non malicious taken at that point whereas people just not following the rules properly not yeah. understanding the system not technologies getting like, in the yeah. way yeah and mm. and that happens and I'll see you'll see more loss prevention measures put in there where you'll see some of these barriers now where people want to check your receipt and check you've done things mm. thoroughly so I think that's an element to the whole technology shift there can be a lot of good and a lot of process removal in doing your own self checkout time becomes an issue for a lot of us and it removes some of the time pain but there have been some issues with that if they're gonna pay uh, police to do this what mm. and, and one of the issues is not enough staff on the shop floor mm. why don't they just put more staff on the shop floor well that's a big challenge isn't it because I think when the staff have been on the floor we've also seen a rise in uh, violence towards shop workers abuse towards shop workers and it's a really big ask to expect those staff members as well as all of the other things they have to do within the job to start taking on the control of mm. something that's theft that's a, it, it's an illegal act so I think it's actually about trying to get the right people in the right place with the right experience I do think actually having people on the floor has always been a natural deterrent we call it meet and greet if there are more people around and watching you it's less likely to happen so that could be something retailers look towards I think there's just so much in the changing picture of shopping that we've got to make sure that our workers are protected we need to make sure that obviously that it reduces down because all of our costs go up if not mm. but is there a need still for more support with all of the work the food banks are doing to, to stop people having to go to these measures. Mm. I was talking to someone from one of the big supermarkets today who said that organised crime is actually behind a lot of supermarket shoplifting these days. He talked about looting. He actually said people would come into some of their stores with wheelie bins and swipe the shelves and then run out. This isn't just, in all the cases, just one person going and taking something. And he, But he also said that the police currently aren't responding quickly enough and police typically maybe aren't responding if a theft is under 60, 70, 80 pounds or something. That's a problem, isn't it? Well, that's maxed out capacity, isn't it? It's the police that are maxed out with their services. We know that they're under pressure. We know the shop workers themselves have been asked to do more and deliver more. If looting en masse is going on, obviously that's an act of crime. It's an organised act of crime and it needs stamping out. But I think in the numbers, there's a whole mix going on of people, as I say, who feel they've no other choice, but also people that are un unintentionally doing it. And I think until self-checkout and technology becomes becomes an easier format to use, we need to also consider mm. that that could be happening. And it is a huge problem. The British Retail Consortium estimating 8 million crimes, which costs, they, they believe, a, a billion pounds annually. It's an enormous issue, isn't it? Right across the sector. Completely. And in organisations like Grocery, you're not making huge amounts of profit on every item sold. So you will feel the impact of that as a shopper. They have to recover that cost somehow. And you can see when we've had actually food start to come down in cost, unfortunately, we're going to have to start maybe looking mm. at our price is increasing if this isn't combated and I think that's why we've heard that action today and what you've got to hope is that the right supports put around the people that have to make these measures happen and put in place mm. and the right support exactly mm. as well for the people who are working in these stores and yes, having to exactly. deal with it Kate Harcastle really interesting talking to you thank you for coming on five minutes yeah, thanks Kate we are here until uh, just before six o'clock tonight lots more to come your way